Sirs, what seeks you in my latest tent? Inspiration? Be gone from here. Oh no, we didn't get to look at the most important one, the claw marks. Maybe we'll get to come back again later, or... I gotta prioritize my time. Uh, corny business. Nothing of import. Horse racing. Which one's my horse? Behold, gallant knights and ladies decorous. Gaze at the host assembled before us. Look upon chivalry's best and most storied. Come from far lands, here to seek glory. Hear now their names as I shout them aloud. Savor their titles of their presence, be proud. Palmerin, the Baron of Longfall. Linus of Metina! Yay! Rainfarn of Atra! Yay! Paul Makaspark of Maked! Donimir of Troy! I need a helmet with a feather or two. Guy de Boisfren! In service to the Duchess! Brof Boisfren! Delwyn of Craigiao! Count Ty of Dondal, and say of Lyria and Rivia a prince. Graphix of Forhorn. For Gregoire of Mont Gorgon, let out a roaring cheer. The faint fire of silence, tawny champion from last year. Today's winner of contests, his victory to secure. Shall face a Gregoire in a challenge severe. Does ignorance demand a bard in deceit? Does someone need telling how Tawny's proceed? Uh, why not? Yes, I do, if you please. Ere the sands from the glass retire. Any chance you could say it normally? <laughs> not at all. <clears throat> <laughs> Ere the sands from the glass retire, and hearty toil your steed does tire, neath all the gates you must guide your horse, and each of five targets strike with bolts. Each dummy felt adds more sands to the glass, and each true shot bolt repeats the task. Yep, all clear now. Rafix of Fourhorn, is that what you call yourself? You shall fool me. To this day, I bear marks where I met your steel. But don't you remember? What? I am Tai of Dorntal, and I swear to you, before the tourney's end, I shall have added another book to that collection on your muck. Done. Then step aside. You're in my way. Who are you? The Tony's protector, the mate Vivian. Her beauty entrances both beasts and men. My heart's greetings, dear knights. May my grace guide you and show you the path of honor, valor, and glory. Accept my wishes of good fortune, sir, and devote all your strength to the tourney, and only it. The time has come for you, sir knight. Mount your steed. Swift be your flight. Ladies and gentlemen of lineage illustrious, Soon steeds shall swarm like ants most industrious. To beat time's passage, they'll ride like the gale. What a sight to behold, what a lark, what a tale. Before a ceramic of forehorn dubbed, his spurs flash like lightning to a shine they've been rubbed. Okay. I really don't know about this one. And he's off! We the thunderous roar, hoofs pound the ground. No legion of drummers could make such a sound. Ooh, people, you gotta not stand so close. I might accidentally behead you. <laughs> I'm serious. If I miss something, is it worth for me to go back, or should I just keep going? I'm not too sure about that. We're doing okay so far. Oh! Frick. Keep going. 
We have half the time left. Are we actually being tallied for this? In regards to the points and stuff? I don't know. Or is it just a time thing? It's hard for me to keep my speed. Because whenever we do this, I gotta like start from the beginning with the stamina again. Welp. People are angry. What do I do? <laughs> are we really gonna be okay? Oh, Geralt, you gotta go a little bit faster. Five. Our time is going down really rapidly, though. Okay. Oh my god. I'm like trying to look at 20,000 different things at the same time right now. Can we make it? There we go. Someone get out. Okay, we're fine. Oh, I didn't get it. That's fine. So close. Will he last? Enjoy and keep pace. Uh we missed a few things. A race of such style, such grace, such speed. To watch was a pleasure, a treat indeed. To honor our entrance, praise each fair night. We shall feast from eve till dawn's first light. The finest of wine and food shall be served. If you've blood in your veins, come collect what's deserved. I congratulate you. Here. Your price. A saddle adorned with your crest. Many thanks. By the way, my maid saw a man with white hair sneak out of my tent. Would you know who it might have been? No idea. <laughs> How juvenile. Congratulations on your win. In stellar style, no less. Ah. I no longer regret I was not able to participate. Almost. We must drink to this. Come with me to the feast. We shall await Vivian together. Lead the way. Did I actually win over everybody? I finished the race. So, any thoughts on Vivian? Her beauty is striking. That is not what I asked. <laughs> I'm still too early to say anything I'd be willing to stand behind. Managed to figure one thing out. She uses powerful magic, masking illusions. Do you mean to say she might in truth look different than she seems? Only guessing right now. We've still some time before Vivian arrives. Let us drink. Drink? Is it really such a good idea? Oh, why not? It's not like we haven't done our fair share of drunk battling anyway. To Vivian, may you find the means to aid her. To Vivian. Ah, when I first laid eyes on her, I finally understood what all those poems and ballads were trying to say. Love's not poetry alone. Sometimes it's prose. Sometimes it's just plain ugly. You say that only because you do not know Vivian as I do. A life with her would be sweetness itself. Actually, you don't know her all that well either. Dropped something. I demand satisfaction. You've insulted me twicely. And twicely ought to be enough. You refuse to duel? Then I shall show you how I treat cowards. Um, who is this guy? Okay, this is really sad because he's holding such a big grudge against me, but I can't even remember who he is. Better not tell him that, though. 
three against two. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> Am I gonna be okay? How is this not cowardly at all? You're trying to take advantage of the fact that you have more people. Well, we gotta be careful here. Boom, he's gone. Attack! <laughs> oh. Um, people don't seem to be cheering us on right now. They're really scared about this. Are we okay? There we go. How you doing, Guillaume? There we go! Come on, get him, Guillaume. I'll give you one. Yeah! Three nothing, Ty. Might want to give some serious thought to whether you want to face me for a fourth. I shall kill you, freak! You got your chance, sir. You failed to seize it, and now you must leave. We shall meet again, mutant. Hmm. Not sure why he hated me that much. Was it back in the previous games? Because he's from the Order of the Flaming Rose. My heart swells to behold this beautiful celebration of valor and honor, and to witness you, who embody the chivalric virtues in your lives, strive for greatness. Yet, after a time of combat must come a time of peace and respite. Thus, I invite all who fought in the tourney to this feast held in your, and none others, honor. And should any among you crave solitude, Private tents await you nearby. The group melee shall take place on the morrow. Glory shall be within grasp for each and every one of you. The best among you shall have the honor to face our reigning champion, the famed Grégoire de Gourgon, victor of last year's tourney. Celebrate, make merry, revel as you will, yet be mindful of the trial that awaits you tomorrow. Sounds good. Early night of rest, or do you want to do some more stalking? Follow her. We shall meet in your tent before your last contest. You must help her. You're assuming she wants to be helped. Is it really a problem, or is it just something we don't know? Good tidings? Here in Beauclair, all's right and fair. That grey domed scoundrel, ever seeking Lady Vivian, some kind of maniac. Well, that guy doesn't sound drunk at all. Huh. This isn't going to turn out to be some weird romance thing, right? I hope not. I don't want to make Yon feel bad. Can I look at the marks now? Hmm. Strange. We're sure I'd find her here. Ah, oh, they're still here, but they're not highlightable. Huh. Oh! The Golden Oriole? Flew off. 
Worth going after. It's her. Looks like the bird's leading me somewhere. The color of her hair. Although I find that people in the Witcher universe, or at least in the Witcher 3, it doesn't seem to do blonde hair colors very well. A lot of times, it just seems like an unnatural color. Well, if she's a bird, that seems pretty harmless. Where's she leading me, though? Oh, whoa! Holy god! Was this intended? Oh! Wow, where- I don't even- I was just thinking, was this bird leading me to a nice place or a trap? Yeesh. Panthers. Pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? I've been to Sintra to look at the queen. Pussycat, pussycat, what did you there? Run, fool, that's not a cat but a panther. <laughs> Panthers are dangerous predators, found in forests and other woodlands. They are quick, agile, and like all cats, diabolically cunning. <laughs> like all cats. In many less than thoroughly urbanized areas, folks still believe panthers are the stranded souls of those who die in their sleep. Superstition thus holds anyone perishing in this way should be dragged to the nearest woods and left there without a burial. The panther spirit of the deceased may then devour its own body thereby passing on to the nether realms. This belief must be eradicated by any means, for it leads to epidemics of cholera and other contagious diseases born of rotting corpses. Besides, it is patiently, it is patently ridiculous, given panthers are not necrophages and will not consume carrion of any sort. They prefer more spiry and lively prey, such as deer or even humans, or even witchers, provided they are not ill and do not stink too badly. Oh, maybe I failed the last one here. Oops. Now where were you, little birdie? Over there- oh? Oh, you're standing here. You're a little bit too small for me to see you. Look at this, though. There's, like, fireflies all over the place. Come on. Whoa! Another one?! Oh my god. It's too damn fast! It's running everywhere. Oh. I was busy admiring the night sky here. Why do you gotta ruin it like this? Now I don't feel comfortable walking around without Quen on. There's another one. Seriously? Not bad. Slow you down. Where are you going? Another one? Damn it. Whoa! Ogier's sword looks really nice in action. I'll give it that. We still have to worry about the group battle tomorrow. But tonight. This birdie is leading me somewhere maybe not so nice. Look at that moon. Wow. Please, no more panthers. I don't even have that many potions. Bird flew off over the hill. Might be quicker to pass through the cave. The cave? <laughs> I don't know about that. 
Geralt, you're a witcher! You should know the dangers! No sign of the bird anymore. Guillaume mentioned a clearing in the woods. Vivian strolling around it at night. Could find her there. Oh, I lost the bird because I meditated. That's okay. I needed to because I had no potions. Whoa! What? Holy God! A white! I don't have dragon glass! What do I do? What is that? The other creature! Do they come in pairs? Whites. Oh, the other thing disappeared alongside. Oh, what? I knew this was a bad idea. Abaya? When did we see that? Oh, that's the name of the water hag near Caratrolda. Whites. They say the dead like quiet. I don't know about the dead, but the whites certainly do. The whites are ghastly and threatening in appearance. One should not approach them with sword drawn or attack them unprovoked. Left alone, they present no serious danger to anyone and are far more interested in mixing noxious brews in cauldrons than in fighting. The species mainly lives around ancient burial sites, though they have also been spotted near more recently founded cemeteries and wherever mass graves can be found. Whites spend the winter months in a state of lethargy, very similar to human sleep. They live strictly solitary lives. In fact, it is practically unheard of for these creatures to appear in groups. Yet, when they fear their territory is threatened, and it is enough for one to step foot in a white's territory for it to feel threatened, whites transform into dangerous foes and even abandon their solitary ways to summon other monsters to their aids. Necrophage. Noted for the future. Which way should we go though? We can see the entrance here. But this side goes deeper in. Oh, it's just empty. There's some ores here. Rose Tree Hill, Gorgon Foothills. Yeah, this wasn't faster at all. What was Geralt thinking? Whoa. Okay. Follow the bird. It says we have to wait until midnight, but thankfully, it's pretty much midnight right now. Witcher. Lady Vivian? Counted on me getting lost. I did. I thought you no different from the knights. Good at tourneys, hopeless in the face of true danger. I was mistaken. Here you come to this clearing often. This is where it all began. And as I was not able to evade you, save myself from you, then I want it done here. In this very spot, with no witnesses. Want what done? While you are a witcher, you were hired to kill me, were you not? Then do so, now. And do it quickly, I beg you. I shan't resist. Witchers only hunt monsters. And even then, not all. You're no monster. Then what am I to your eyes? This is strange, because judging by what you look like right now, it doesn't seem like... Like, are you a specific species of monster that can turn into a bird, or... Were you afflicted by a curse? Well, I don't want to make assumptions. Only thing I've figured out so far is you're no danger to anyone. 
Hope to learn more, though. If you've no contract on my life, why take an interest at all? Did Guillaume put you up to it? Is that why? He wanted to help you. Asked me to do him a favor. Frankly, if I can do something for you, I'll do it, willingly. Why should I trust you? Cause the Duchess trusts me? Cause I'm a freak, too? Cause cases like yours are my bread and butter. Take your pick. You shall not turn on me. Use what I say against me. You shall not tell anyone. That depends on what you've done. Have you done something bad? If not, you don't have to worry. Can't promise anything till I hear what you have to say. Decisions based on appearances? Not a good idea. Regretted making those too often in the past. Ah, uh, so be it. I shall tell you what my mama once told me. When she was with child, expecting me, she and my father spent much time together near the wood, here in this clearing. Mama loved to listen to the Orioles sing. She would stroke her belly and say, My daughter should be as beautiful as that bird. Such is my wish. But a creature dwelt in the wood who envied my parents their happiness. One day it appeared before them to say the whole wood belonged to it, and they had dared to delight in something that was not theirs. It demanded payment, and when my parents said that they had nothing, it claimed their unborn daughter as its own. Parents ever describe the creature? They called it a nymph born of the deep woods, with no mother or father. But I was too young, too distraught by the curse's onset to ask after details. What happened after that? Nothing at first. I came into the world a perfectly normal child, and my parents forgot that day's events. But 15 summers into my life, the curse began to show. Initially, only when the moon was full. But now it's advanced so that even in daytime, I must use magic ointment to mask its symptoms, to look normal. Thus, I thought someone had discovered my secret, then hired you to kill me. In fact, I was resigned to death in coming here. Perhaps death would be preferable to my complete and permanent transformation. For I fear that is what lies in store. You haven't harmed anybody, so there's really no reason for me to kill you. Ointment you use includes a potent magic ingredient. You don't have the immunity mages have. Use heavy doses, or normal doses too long, and it could be dangerous to you. I sensed this. The very reason I knew I would have to give it up in the end, and bid my human form a final farewell. The curse. It could be reversible. Once ran into a baron, transformed into a cormorant, ostensibly for good. Managed to cure him completely. And you truly think you could do something like this for me? Can't guarantee a thing. Tough case, yours. You were cursed before birth. That alone complicates things. Also, you claim the curse is increasing its hold. Symptoms are progressing. Could try transferring the curse onto someone else. What? Oh. Out of the question. I shall not allow it to ruin an innocent life. Is this the only method you know? Only one that's completely safe. So there is another. Pretty quick to reject help. Why is that? The curse once transferred would probably have a weaker hold on a new host. Lots weaker. I do not even wish to hear of it. Yeah, of course, because she would be harming someone else. She seems pretty kind-hearted. And I don't want to tell Guillaume about this because I'm sure he would be like, Oh, let me do it. Transfer the curse to me. So we definitely can't say anything to him, at least for now. All right, there is another. Ancient ritual. We'd need an Oriole egg. Should release the curse's grip permanently. Gotta warn you, though. Could have serious consequences. Consequences? What kind? Curse was cast before you came into this world. Ritual involved transferring it to an as yet unhatched chick. You'd be free. Thing is, you could be left with the average lifespan of an Oriole. Seven years. 
I understand. Alas, every rose has its thorn, and there are no happy endings. Yet truth be told, I never thought I would get one. I came here prepared to die, yet you wish to give me seven years of life. Real life, free life. This is no dilemma. I agree, wholeheartedly. I see why, I understand. Don't have to decide just yet, think it through. I will. They must miss me at the tawny grounds by now. Shall we return? Hmm. It's rare that when we do a contract for somebody, because you know how always we have to be making these decisions for people, but she's giving me a very, very clear signal that she prefers one method over the other. So if things don't get any more complicated, I would definitely go with what she wants. Let's. But are you gonna... Uh, yes. I cannot appear there all in feathers. Pardon me for a moment. You can change it, Will? No, but I discovered the water of this pool helps. Its effects are brief, but I can always be sure of them. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, maybe it's worth investigating into the pool. Come. Oh, this is so fairy tale like. Did you learn anything? Yeah. Then speak, man. Can you not see I'm out of my mind with worry? What ails her? She asked me not to talk about it. But I want only the best for her. Perhaps I shall be able to help or, I don't know, console her at the least. You... Okay, I appre... <laughs> Guillaume is... Like, he really wants to help, but I don't think we should tell him this. And you have to understand that just because you want to play the hero, doesn't mean she wants to be your damsel. Vivian gave me the details of her situation, but she did so in confidence. Promised I wouldn't tell anyone. But I'm not just anyone. Why, I would do anything for her. I was the one to ask you to help her. You cannot shut me out now. I'm sorry. Look, in time Vivian will come to understand what she owes you, I'm sure of it. But until then, you gotta understand the whole world doesn't revolve around you. How dare you lecture me? This is not the aid I sought. And to think I gave up my spot in the tourney to you? I regret it now. Do you even intend to compete to the end? Or now that you've bound Vivian to your terms, you no longer see the need? I'm really disappointed in your attitude here. I actually feel like I should back out of the tourney just because you said that. Why are you throwing a temper tantrum? I'm still helping her. If you really liked her, then you would let me help her and finish this. But I'll ignore what you said. I don't back out of anything. I'll take part in the last skirmish. Besides, Vivian will be busy till the tourney's end. Indeed. In that case, you must meet the other knights of your team. They await near the arena's entrance by the training ground. Got it. Thanks. I know now the two teams' rosters. I shall be captain of ours. That means you shall do as I say for the duration of the fight. Is this clear? Palmer and Alonso will lead the opposing team. With this skirmish, we commemorate the Battle of Fox Hollow of 1218, when a hands of southern outlaws led by Haller the Brown attacked Tucson only to be driven off by brave knights, thus setting a precedent. Since that day, knights errant have guarded the Duchy's borders. Palmerin drew the short straw, so his team shall play the Barbarian Hatter's men. Any questions? None. If you swing your blade as deftly as you shoot, we shall win. Good luck. It is time, gentlemen. 
Take your weapons and proceed to the arena. A cheer for the knights, the ladies, the lords. For our next entertainment, the team shall cross swords. Two rifle crews, two coteries shall fight, full tilt, till one dropped to its knees. Who virtue ignores, or lance blows unclean, shall forever be branded as shameful, obscene. While the knights prepare, let me say I'm elated to behold such a crowd on edge, breath baited. Whoever here wins, the past champion shall face. All others must leave, heads bowed in disgrace. Let us begin! Crowd, race a ruckus! Blood, sweat and tears shall soon follow in buckets. I need a helmet. How do I tell who's on my team? Let us end this! Your time! Oh! This is such a... <laughs> this seems kind of chaotic because we're all just kind of in this mess here. Whoa! Leaping Lebiodos wounds! Ow! Hey, I can eat here! But I can't use Quen. From the right! Now! <gasps> Wait, half the people I've on my team are gone already. Of this now there's but Rafix, though he's far from done. When all the dust clears, shall he have won? Wait, every single person on my team is gone? You've gotta be joking me. Really? Lost to do evil. I'll beat it out of you. From the right. I can't believe this. I shall never retreat. Not one step. Oh! I'll show you. Get that guy. I'm doing this all by myself pretty much. <laughs> no mercy. Goodbye. The world's never seen a fight quite so glorious. For showing such verve, each knight was victorious. Yet in tourneys as in life, but one champion may reign. Today, he is the one. Praised be his name. He felt a whole host slew the most. To Rafix of Forhorn, who the strength of lions boasts. He sailed through all trials. Each test he passed with ease. But now awaits the last. Will it bring him to his knees? For Gregoire de Gorgon, who on this ground last won, shall spar him for the title, and the day is done. To the tired remainder, we salute your endeavors. Return to your wives, your loves, your whomevers. You think this guy has a script? He's just reading off of it? I'm starting to get a little bit suspicious with how often he's doing this. <laughs> It is time. Step into the arena. Should you suffer grievous harm during combat, have you any last wishes? Any missives you wish passed to your loved ones? None, because I won't die. Thanks, I'm fine. The brave knight Rafix hails from Forhorn. It might sound fictitious, yet there he was born. Now entering the grounds, a titan of infamy, Gregoire de Gorgon, victor of Las Tony. I can't see his face. I wish both combatants good fortune and fame. 
Oh, I fought five guys at the same time. You're not gonna be anything for me. The titans look stairs, ferocious and spry as wolves hunting hares. Madame the Monsieur, the crowd cries Ooh. in shock. Seraphic seems weak. Will he survive? His fortunes look bleak. Okay, I can get health back, but I can't use Witcher spells. That should be enough for me. And now a few words from our sponsor, the Tufo Vineyard. For strong bones <laughs> and teeth, drink Tufo. A wine for your table, a wine for your soul. Sponsors, of course. I wonder how the vineyard situation works here. Do they have like multiple companies and collectively they make Tusam famous for wine? Or is it more like a government thing? A duchy thing? Ooh! Refix of Fahorn! This is champion! A sight to behold! He defeated Gregoire de Gorgon! Hail Ralphix, Sadfix, Sadfix, Sadfix. I want to hire this guy for my events. As patron of this grand tourney, I've the honor to decorate our grand champion. His vow he made upon the garter of her illustrious highness, Anna Henrietta. Doubtless the Duchess's grace carried him to the splendid victory. He showed great courage, great strength, great composure. He fought nobly with honor, and thus rightfully deserves the title of this year's Champion of the Arena! Yay! I need to talk to you. Not now. We shall meet later in my tent. I have duties to attend to, as do you. Folk regard you. The least you should do is wave. I'm a little bit sad we didn't go as Geralt of Rivia, but at the same time, I feel like having such an extravagant tourney win to my name is not really Geralt's style either. I feel like I should be more notorious and infamous, not really well known for such noble, good things. I'm a freak after all. Greetings, my lady. Have you decided? I have. I stand by all I have said. I wish to endanger no one and thus choose the method involving an egg. If it's to be the egg of an Oriole, I know where to find one. There is a nest in my clearing. Might you explain the nature of the ritual? Its exact course? Sure, but seems your tense grown ears. Show yourself, Guillaume. Can hear you breathing, and I know damn well it's you. Why are you here, sir? This is a private audience. Geralt, what is the meaning of this? Is this some scheme you've hatched unbeknownst to me? He means well, but look at her reaction. She doesn't know him at all. Like, he's a stranger. No, no scheming involved. Guillaume hired me, but this matter relates to you, not him. Didn't invite him here in any case. Actually surprised he showed up. My lady, I live to serve you. Whatsoever you require, you need but beckon. I'm yours to command. Are you quite finished? Is that all you wish to say? I... I, I suppose so. So you shall do what I command, sir. Very well then. Listen carefully. Leave this tent. Turn towards the Duchy's northern marches. And run. Run until the tawny grounds are no longer within sight. Return only once you've cooled off. Then leave me be forevermore. Understood? My lady, but... Your, your troubles... I, I only wish... The, the witchers see... Out now! It's an important lesson for Guillaume. You assured me I could trust you! I didn't invite him here. I kept your secret. Didn't tell him anything he didn't already know. 
I understand he hired you, so you had to report to him. But this is not his affair, Geralt. This is my life. I agree, and I didn't say anything. Beyond the absolute most necessary thing, which is the fact that I could help you. Absolutely sure you did the right thing? Not too hasty rejecting his help? Can't conduct the ritual using your reflection without him. Needed someone who'd willingly assume the curse in your stead. And you thought I would agree to this? No, Geralt! When we spoke in the meadow, you told me of a ritual which required no lusty knights to aid us. This is the method I wish to pursue. I respect that. I agree. Let's move forward. Need to find an egg. Preferably an Oriole's. Ritual itself isn't complicated, but like I said before, there'll be a side effect. Still sure you want to go through with it? Yes. I saw a nest in the clearing where we spoke. But before we go, tell me. What will become of the chick? We'll have to break the egg. Like you said, not everyone gets a happy ending. And for a dream to come true, there must be sacrifices. Very well. Let us go. If we weren't doing it to the egg, we'd be doing that to Guillaume. And actually, even then, I don't think doing it to Guillaume is a problem. It's the fact that, after we do that, he's probably gonna feel like Vivian owes him something. This is the place. Stand back. I'll take care of this. Oh, you've got to be joking me. Hold on. I might die. <laughs> Eggs fell in a moss patch. They're fine except for one. It's cracked. Will it do? think so. Even better, we don't have to crack an egg ourselves. It's almost like it's nature lending us a hand. Now what must I do? Just to be sure, gonna ask one last time. Positive you want to do this? If we succeed, the changes will be irreversible. You'll probably also only have seven years left to live, at the most. Seven years free of the fear that someone might spy me at the wrong moment? Of the stigma of being a freak? A monster? Seven years of a life both true and unfettered? Yes, Kelt. I'm certain I wish to do it. All right. You need to concentrate now. Repeat after me. Muna Gandrao. Muna Finerat. Muna Gandrao. Muna Finerat. Muna Gandrao. Muna Finerat. Muana Gandrao. Muana Finerat. Sorry, Mother Oriole. Damn it. Geralt! Look! Look! Oh, gods! I shall be able to attend balls! I shall travel to Oxenford! To Novigrad, even! Thank you, Witcher! How to thank Guillaume. He's the one hired me, to help you. Yes, I'm grateful to him as well immensely. 
Will you tell him so for me? No, I can see exactly why she doesn't want to tell him herself. Should tell him yourself, don't you think? Perhaps I should, but I would prefer not to. Convey my gratitude to him in my stead. Please, be so kind. Sure, I'll tell him. Farewell, Vivian. That was uh, a little bit stranger than the usual quest, huh? Because usually we get to make a big decision here. I'm guessing what actually happened is that our decision point was telling Guillaume about the curse or not. But I'm pretty sure if we told him, he would have tried to volunteer himself for the curse, which... I mean, it's not what Vivian wants. I feel like we should be respecting people's autonomy, you know? And that that's what she chose for herself. Guillaume was being way too pushy, and he wanted too badly to show off that he's the one who was willing to help her. If he didn't do that, I feel like this could have potentially played out differently. If he was willing to stay in the shadows, and then at the end there, Geralt tells Vivian, Oh, actually, I was hired by Guillaume. Then that would have made him look so much better. But instead, now, he just looks like a creep. A lusty knight, infatuated That's with his image of the perfect lady. Something horrible. Ah! If we want to return to Guillaume, he is at the tents. Tourney grounds. We can fast travel there. Guillaume... If you really love her, you should be happy that she's okay now. The air here is such that one the is never summoned him. I pledge my love to win the tourney with your name. Geralt, what a Vivian. Managed to lift her curse. Truly? So all will be well. Her troubles are done? Yes. Asked me to give you a message. Said she's grateful. Thanks to you, she can live a normal life. Good, good, but how does she fare? She is happy. He does not need to know the second part. Vivian chose what suited her best. She's completely free now. And happy, I think. Without me, you Oh my her. god. But that doesn't mean she owes you her love. Yes! Got this bard friend. Philosopher too, I guess. Amateur. He'd say, if you love somebody, set them free. Do you know what, Geralt? You earned your reward, so take it. But keep your advice to yourself. Adieu. Oh my goodness, that's a really disappointing attitude to see from Guillaume. It feels like he only wanted to help her because it would make her love him. Champion, it is an honor to meet you. Oh no, no, don't talk about it. Yes, my lord. Hey, I fought you earlier, didn't I? It is right and fitting, Witcher, that the Duquesa summoned and you came. A fruitful hunt to you, Witcher. Everybody Eat, knows me. Be merry. Thus spake the prophet Leviota. Eh, Guillaume's definitely leaving a bad aftertaste in my mouth. Guillaume de Lanfall was a very model of a knight errant, the placard boy for Toussaint, if you will. When Geralt first met the young man, he was valiantly tilting at a windmill, which, to be fair, turned out to be hiding a ferocious giant. Getting himself into trouble clearly counted among Guillaume's favorite hobbies. The second time Geralt met him, he had to rescue the knight from an enraged Shalmar, trying its best to rip him to shreds in a packed arena. Wounded and yet grateful, Guillaume asked the Witcher to meet him about a very urgent matter. The matter turned out as his matters want in Tusan to be an affair of the heart. Guillaume was tormented by unrequited love for the Duchess's lady-in-waiting, Vivian de Tabri. He suspected her frigidness and distance must be the result of some malicious curse. Geralt, a professional curse-breaker, naturally took the contract. To get a chance at an audience with Lady Vivian, he had to take the wounded Guillaume's place in the knight's tourney. The Witcher determined Vivian was indeed afflicted by a curse and had been since before she was born, a dark malediction which caused her to transform into a bird every night. 
Geralt offered to try to cure this cumbersome condition. Vivian asked him to not reveal her secret to anyone, so Geralt did not tell Guillaume about his plans. Geralt performed a ritual freeing Vivian from the curse. She decided to travel abroad in order to enjoy the life she had left to the utmost. That sounds absolutely wonderful. You know, thinking about it now, I feel like there might have been a little bit of jealousy involved with the whole Guillaume situation here. Because I made him look bad twice. I killed the giant, I killed the Shalmar, and that one was directly in front of Vivian too. So maybe in his mind, he thought that I was trying to steal Vivian away from him, so that's why he's acting so antagonistic towards me, even though I don't care about Vivian at all. Palmer and Delonfall Not all knights errant in Toussaint were embodiments of virtue, but if I had to choose one among them who did personify their chivalric creed, it would be Palmer and Delonfall. He is all the admirable for the fact that, years ago, he was no stranger to the pleasures of eating, drinking, and making merry in a variety of fashions. With time, however, he abandoned vice and drew closer to the knightly ideal. Geralt realized this when Palmerin came to him as an envoy from Anna Henrietta. The old-fashioned and somewhat naive knight immediately made a good impression on him, for he did take formalities and courtesies a tad too seriously. He was anything but pompous or grandiose. Yeah, maybe that's a good way to describe Toussaint. Everyone just seems very idealistic. Vivian de Tabri was Anna Henrietta's lady-in-waiting. She was a tight-lipped, secretive, and accessible person, but her beauty fascinated men. Geralt saw proof of this when he took a contract from Guillaume, who was in love with her and suspected she might be afflicted by a curse. In order to get an audience with her, Geralt had to take part in the knight's tourney, where Vivian was acting as a patroness. By following Vivian and examining the evidence, Geralt discovered Guillaume was right. Vivian had indeed been struck by a powerful curse before she was even born. This curse caused her to turn into a bird whenever the moon was out. Geralt listened to the story of the curse, then offered to try to lift it. He warned her that this would not be a simple matter. The curse could be transferred to another, but Vivian did not want to agree to that. It could also be removed entirely, but then it was possible Vivian would only have a few years left to live. Geralt kept the information Vivian had confided to him secret, even though Guillaume was determined to help her any way he could. Guillaume tried to convince Vivian. He only wanted what was best for her, but she preferred to remain independent. She and Geralt conducted the ritual together, lifting the curse. Well, I hope she'll be happier from now on for the next seven years. Good, good, good. Did we have any best Jerry entries to read here? Vampires, Detlaf van der Eretang. Oh, under bestiary, not person? Oh my god. It was horrifying to watch. That gentleman suddenly turned into a ghastly beast with claws and tore those men to shreds with the precision of a master butcher. That laugh is a higher vampire and one of the most terrifying creatures the world has ever known. Some vampires of his sort live among men easily and inconspicuously, sometimes even gaining the respect and admiration of their community. Yet even the most civilized vampire can be incredibly dangerous if provoked, and Detlaf, Detlaf was far from civilized. When in his two-legged form, Detlaf strikes in surprising and unique ways, so one must be extremely alert and attentive. His razor-sharp claws, wielded with great strength and precision, are his chief weapons. Yet he can also wield weapons of human devising with extraordinary skill. Like all higher vampires, Detlaf can turn into fog and envelop opponents. When fighting a vampire in this form, one must watch out for magic puddles and attack from the air. When wounded, Detlef tends to assume his winged form, using these powerful appendages to stun his foes near effortlessly. One must remember higher vampires are immortal creatures, and thus do not fear for their lives while fighting, meaning they take every risk. They are able to turn invisible and can regenerate strength during combat. All in all, they are supremely difficult foes even for a witcher. Yeah, definitely. The Bruxa of Corvo Bianco The Bruxa Geralt encountered and killed in self-defense at Corvo Bianco differed from other creatures of this sort. Firstly, it was more intelligent, capable even of articulating words in human language without much difficulty. Oh, so normally Bruxas can't. What's more, this Bruxa was tied to the beast, the mysterious murderer prowling Beauclair at the time. Fighting it presented Geralt with quite the challenge. Like any other Bruxae, this one possessed strength and speed far above that of any human, could turn invisible, and could attack using a sonic wave. 
as this typical for all vampires, it sought to suck its victim's blood. This meant the usual defense against those creatures, the Black Blood Potion, was an effective weapon against it, as were the Moon Dust Bomb and, naturally, the Witcher's trusty Silver Blade. So she was going to that place to look for Detlef's arm. But why did Detlef have a random arm hanging around there anyway? Seems like he got into another fight beforehand? 